for further analysis on this, we are joined by James Dorsey. He's a senior fellow at uh, Singapore Raja Rantham School of International Studies. Uh, James, great to have you here with us on TRT World. Let's start with uh, Hezbollah and uh, Israel. How likely do you think is it for these ex this exchange of rockets between the two sides to result in an all-out war? Obviously, that risk is always there. But I think what is also clear is that neither Hezbollah nor Israel at this point, despite the fact that it is hinted at wanting to take on Hezbollah, neither Hezbollah nor uh, Israel at this point wants an escalation. The problem, of course, is that you've essentially have had a war of attrition going on since October 7 or October 8. And uh, it's uh, the danger is that that spins out of control. And when it comes to uh, ceasefire talks, uh, I mean, we have seen the United Nations Security Council adopting a resolution on a comprehensive ceasefire in Gaza. Now, it seems to me both Hamas and Israel, uh, their response uh, is not very clear at this stage. What do you think is stopping these two sides uh, uh, from coming out and uh, saying exactly what they want? I think, in effect, nothing has changed in recent months. The divide between Hamas and I Israel is over uh, whether or not the ceasefire should be permanent or temporary. And uh, if there is an agreement, uh, what would be the, uh, the nature and the timetable of a Israeli withdrawal from Gaza? What has changed is that President uh, Biden has issued a ceasefire plan and put his credibility or prestige behind it. And therefore, both Hamas and Israel can do not want to be seen to be uh, to outright rejected. The problem is that Netanyahu may be in a far more difficult position than Hamas is. He's caught between a rock and a hard place. With other words, he does not want a rupture in relations with the United States, which rejection of this plan would mean. But on the other hand, he has a cabinet uh, to which he cannot sell this plan. But w what I find uh, odd here is uh, why there has not been an official response from Israel yet. James, you remember when uh, this uh, ceasefire idea was first floated by President Joe Biden, he claimed that this is an Israeli plan. Weeks have passed and we still have not heard a single official response from Tel Aviv. All we have now is a statement from uh, Anthony Blinken saying that he is seeing hopeful signs that a ceasefire uh, would be reached after speaking to uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. So, uh, I mean, it seems to me that uh, the U.S. is acting as uh, the spokesperson of uh, Tel Aviv now. I don't think it's quite that simple. Um, what I do think is that uh, what Netanyahu, Netanyahu, the reason we're not getting a response is because Netanyahu is caught between a rock and a hard place, and uh, he's trying to buy time. Um, the, 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 what, what I think the United States has done is on the one hand, by saying Israel endorsed this uh, proposal, and then having the proposal endorsed by the Security Council, he's put enormous pressure on Israel. It makes it much more difficult for Netanyahu to reject. And at the same time, by publicly putting the onus on Hamas, he's trying to shield Israel. So in a sense, it's a double-edged sword. But I would not underestimate the kind of pressure the United States is trying to put on Israel. The problem with it is that uh, what may work in terms of pressure on Israel may not be simply diplomatic or statements. It may have to be real deeds. James Dorsey, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for talking to us here on TRT World. Really appreciate your taking out the time. Thank you for having me.